one of the Isle of Man's worst um, disasters overall, and also the Isle of Man's worst mining disaster, which took place here on the 10th of May, 1897, when 20 miners lost their lives in the mine shaft behind us. We're stood here now at the mine, and it's a lovely spring morning, and blue skies and fresh air, and that apparently was exactly the same type of weather conditions on the day, so they arrived here, presumably after the weekend, on a lovely spring morning, um, got to the top of the shaft, normal work day, and then at six o'clock there'd be a bell rung out over the mine, some of them to the top of the shaft, they'd start to climb down the wooden ladders down the shaft. Within several minutes, a couple of miners reappeared at the surface, climbed up the ladders, and they were lying around on the ground gasping for, for breath, and they're basically saying that they thought that the mine was on fire, and then several seconds later, minutes later, there's more miners appeared, and within minutes they'd realise that there was something seriously wrong underground. One of the miners who'd been working here on the Saturday had left a candle burning, fixed it with clay onto the, onto the wooden props which held up the roof in the levels. And it would appear that what had happened, they'd left this, this candle burning, climbed up out of the mine when they went home on the, on the Saturday, and then the, the burning candle had set fire to the timber work underground, which set fire to all the, the props holding up the roof. And above that was um, stacked what they called deads, which is the, the waste rock. Now the fire burnt away the timber, the rock and, and deads above collapsed into the level, blocked the oxygen supply. So when, when timber or anything burns within, with poor oxygen supplies, it forms carbon monoxide rather than carbon dioxide. So over the weekend, this fire took place, the carbon dioxide filled the mine. Any smell of smoke must have disappeared. So on the Monday morning when the, when the miners came here, it had a, the weekend that allowed the, the gas to sink in the shaft, the smoke to disappear, and then they climbed into the shaft, climbed down, and of course, didn't, couldn't smell this odorless, dangerous, poisonous gas, just literally climbed down into it, breathe it in, become unconscious, and sadly died. The mine was managed by Captain John Cooley, um, and it's a name who will forever be associated with Snaefell Mine and the disaster. And shortly after the first miners appeared out of the, the top of the shaft, there, there was alarmed. One of them, ran, one of the staff here, ran to alert him, um, and they realised immediately that something was wrong. And Captain Cooley's first thoughts were to rescue the men underground. Um, he gathered together the rescue parties, and they immediately started to go down to the ladders to try and rescue as many men as possible. But of course, they had the same problem. They were climbing down into this poisonous gas, and they staged a number of. Um, rescue attempts with using different people to go down and try and get the, the men out. They were able at, at first to carry bodies out, lift them out um, by, over the shoulder or drag them up with ropes, try to put some of them in the wooden kibble which was the bucket used to haul the ore and, and drag them out and they also had a, a contraption called a dead box which was rather like a coffin um, that went on the end of the winding rope that they could put the men in and drag them back up which for those that were still alive must have been a particularly um, unpleasant experience as well. Cooley was the hero of the day without doubt. He was the man that went down repeatedly into the poison gas. They had um, a number of different teams that, uh, that were, were changed and rotated around because as soon as they started to feel um, the effects of the gas, they brought them out and put, um, another rescuers went down, but Cooley tried to go down and did do on numerous occasions. One thing we have to remember, Captain Cooley wasn't a young man. He was, um, he was 65, I think, at the time. He was certainly in his 60s. But of course, Captain Cooley was the, was the would bravely tried to lead every rescue party, and he went down a number of times into the mine, and sadly, um, never actually recovered his health from breathing in the gas. Um, and in fact, on one occasion, he almost died himself. Um, he, he became unconscious and had to be brought out. It took them, I think, it was three days to get um, most of the bodies out out of the mine. By that time, they realised that there was nobody else could be left alive, and there was one poor um, miner. He was only a young man who'd managed to get down to the 130 fathom level, um, which is 700 feet, and his body was not actually managed to be rescued for about a month. I, I, I still, every time I come to this mine, I just can't sort of appreciate the scale of the disaster and what must have happened on that morning in May 1897. There's always a bit of an eerie sort of feeling to, to the place, um, but it's very, very difficult, I think, to come up here now to actually appreciate what happened on that day when it's such wonderful surroundings and um, it's, it's very very hard to understand and appreciate.